uh, you know, actually, how many people in this room are immigrants or children of immigrants? Please raise your hand, just curious. So for the hands that are in this room, they know something that I know, which is immigrants have an amazing advantage. They have a very tried and true strategy that we could all learn from. What immigrants are very good at doing is when they come to a new country, they work and they don't spend any money on dumb shit for 10 years. <laughs> and so that's what my parents did. And, uh, and eventually my dad was able to buy a small liquor store in New Jersey. I was a very entrepreneurial kid. I was day trading attention from a young age. I had six lemonade stands when I was seven years old and I would spend all my time trying to figure out what tree and what pole to put the signs on because I was watching people drive and trying to figure out what signs. I was a very sick child. Um, (laughs) When I was 12 and 13, I was selling baseball cards which were very popular in the United States at the time and I was making one to two thousand dollars a weekend selling them in the malls of New Jersey which was great and I was rich for a young kid and it was fantastic but then my career changed. My dad dragged me into the liquor store and I hated it at first but luckily I realized that people collected wine. I was into collecting sports memorabilia. That was my passion, that was the connection and I decided that I was gonna jump into my family business, open up 4,000 liquor stores across America sell the franchise one day and buy the New York Jets American football team because that is my dream. You two stand up, you two stand up. Let's clap it up for these guys. In 1994, I was in my dorm room in college. My friend came over to me, and I wanna start wrapping this up and getting it to what matters to you. He brought me into a room. It was the first time I heard cuckoo, which was the internet. I was very excited about it. I didn't know what it was. I said something stupid like, is this the information superhighway? I looked at it. This is, you know, there's a lot of youngsters in here. This was 1994. I literally stood there and watched people on the internet for five hours. It was that crazy. It's, it was just that insane. It was so new. And when I finally had my turn to go on there, when I finally had my turn to go on there, within 20 minutes, I landed on a message board where people were trading and buying and cards, baseball cards, and I realized, my God, I can do business on this thing. And over the next year, I went head first and learned about eBay, learned about what was going on in Amazon, started learning the early internet culture, and in 1996, I launched winelibrary.com, one of the first two e-commerce wine businesses in America. From 1998 to 2003, in a five-year window, I grew my dad's business from a three to a $60 million business on very, very important terms that matter to this entire room. I had no money. It was a $3 million business that had 10% gross profit, $300,000 before expenses. There was no marketing budget. What I needed is to make every penny work like a dollar. So the strategy became day trading attention. When you day trade attention, my friends, here's what you do. You don't overspend on what everybody believes is tried and true. Every single company in this gorgeous conference right now is grossly overspending money on things that they've been doing for the last decade because it's the things that they accept or the reporting justifies it or they're just lazy to try something new. Everyone. Everyone. And so what you do when you day trade attention is you have to find angles. What's underpriced? How many people here do email marketing or have done email marketing in their lives? Raise your hands. Perfect, a lot of you. In 1997, I started an email newsletter. Most people that came into my liquor store didn't even know what email was in 1997. I collected, I collected, I collected, and in 1998, I had a 200,000-person email newsletter with 91% open rates. Now, it's not because I was a genius, and I know a lot of you sit here just like I do with emails that are 13 to 23% open rates today. It's that in 1997, nobody was emailing. We hadn't ruined it yet. One thing I promise you, more than I know that the sun will come up tomorrow, I know that marketers ruin everything. We ruin the internet, I'm trying to ruin Snapchat and Musical.ly right now, we ruin shit. It's what we do. So, it was 91% open rates there. Then Google AdWords came out. I bought the word wine on Google AdWords for five cents a click and owned it for nine months before anybody bid me up. Because people were still on Yahoo 
and Ask Jeeves and other shit like that. <laughs> and so, that became the rinse and repeat. As I think about B2B players in this environment, it is stunning to me how many B2B businesses here do not understand that producing articles on medium.com, on LinkedIn, writing full content on Facebook in your feed and then spending $100 in ads against employees of the company that you're trying to reach. Let me say that three more times because the one thing I promised myself as I boarded last night in New York to get here is I'm gonna give my talk but I'm gonna give every single person in this audience one thing to take home, do, and then email and say thank you. So let me say it really slow. Right now, on this day, October 6th, right? Is that right? October 6th, 2016, the number one deal, if you day trade attention like I do, in this market is Facebook ads. They are underpriced. They are underpriced because a lot of people in this room still debate what the ROI is, or even worse, they're emotional that Facebook organic reach has come down and now they have to pay for it. While you're emotional and sad that you don't reach as many things, the best ad product that I've seen since Google AdWords has emerged. Or even worse than both of those two scenarios, you haven't even done it yet. You've decided for your business, your customer is not on that platform, yet you've never spent a dollar testing it to know if that's true or not. You've read a headline, You had a friend tell you, but you actually don't do it and you're not sure. We live in a world right now of headline readers. Everybody here has a lot of opinions about Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and influencer and LinkedIn and Medium, but there's very few practitioners. There's very few people that have actually placed the ads. There are very few people that understand that the creative is the variable when you place an ad, and just because you did it once doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It might mean that the creative, the video and the picture that you put out just sucked. And so, as I go through all the other things, just in the middle here for a few minutes, I just want to tell you exactly what I know. What I know is I'm involved with 15 different B2B businesses right now. GE is a client, AT&T is a client, but many startups that I invest in because I I also in my mid-2000s started investing in Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Uber. I've done very well in that world. I basically just told you that to brag. That had no information (laughs) value. But, But what I know about these B2B businesses is right now every single person here can write an article about their expertise in the business that they're in. Not a propaganda for your SaaS product or service, but an article that would be valuable to the people that you're trying to reach. You can write this article literally in a Facebook post. Literally in a Facebook post. And then you can go to the ad product and you can actually target employees of. One of the ways you can target on Facebook is the employees of an organization. How many people here are in B2B? Raise your hand. Higher. Go high for me, Helsinki. Higher again. Show me again. I need to look. High. Perfect. A shitload. A lot of you. All of you. All of you need to hear this. This is the remarkable era of underpriced opportunity in digital and social marketing, yet I'm empathetic to why most of you do not believe that. I get it. Most of the advice, most of the conferences, most of the articles position this in a B2C environment. I know, for example, the following, that if I was to buy one of your companies, the number one thing I would do is the following. Every one of you are in an industry where there is a B2B magazine that is the number one thing that the people in your market read. If you are a company trying to reach customers, I would become that magazine. Let me explain. The other religious point of view that this room needs to take away from this talk, this weekend, or at some point you will believe this is true, whether it is today, or 12 or 24 months from now, 36 months from now, is the following. The quicker everybody in this room understands that they are a media company, comma, software company, comma, wine retailer, comma, lawyer, comma, account service provider. The quicker everybody in this room understands that they are a media company, comma, those things, the quicker you will be successful. I will tell you why. You told me that 
Earlier they said the ad was dead, you said the ad is gotta be creative and good, give it to the creatives. I, I believe more in your world and I'll just add to it. The ad has to bring value. The number one thing that is happening in society in every part of the world is the following. We as human beings, no matter where we're from, we value health, we wanna stay alive and the people, money, you like money. But the number one emerging thing in society, in value, is time. Time is exploding in value to us because we all now live in a 24-7, 365 world. Some of the old timers in this room, remember when the work day ended and it just ended? It wasn't getting emails at night, people expecting you to reply. We now live in a 24-7 world. As a matter of fact, one of the great mistakes of my investing career is Travis Kalkinick, the CEO of Uber, was a very great friend of mine. I passed on investing in Uber in the angel round twice. I cost myself hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm very upset about it. Um, but I invested a little bit later on, not because Uber was doing so well, but because I realized when he came to New York and my brother AJ took the first Uber ride, oh my God, Uber doesn't sell transportation, Uber sells time. We don't care about privacy, we care about time. This is who we are as humans. And what advertising is doing in the last 50 years is it's stopping you from doing what you wanna do and it's selling you something, which means by nature it is stealing your time. Which is why the second you decide that you're a media company and you actually wanna pe bring people value instead of selling them something, you win. If you run home now and misunderstood what I said, which is why I'm creating clar clarity right now for you. If you leave here and misunderstood what I said, you will go home, you will make a Facebook post and you will write a propaganda or sales post and you will push it and it will not be successful. If you heard me loud and clear and understand who you're trying to reach and you write an article about something that brings them value, you will win. For example, a small business in the United States that heard this talk three years ago from me started writing content about golf. They were a law firm, but what they understood was the people they were trying to reach were into golf. And they started writing content about golf and use that content as a gateway drug to close the clients. Because people don't wanna read your sales pitch. They don't have time. People wanna read something that brings value. And the interesting thing about so many of you in the B2B environment is you're actually an expert or knowledgeable about your craft. You actually know. And so putting that content to work is massively important. It was super important for me six, seven years ago that was nothing compared to the ability of going and now targeting the employees of the organization that you're trying to reach. For example, if you're trying to reach the CTO or the CIO, or if you actually know the title of the person you're trying to reach, you are able to make a video on Facebook that shows the value prop of your product. You are able to then in the copy say, does your CIO know you were able to then run $100 worth of ads against the employees of that organization and then 20 people from that organization are gonna take that post and forward it to the CIO, the CTO, the head of finance or whoever you're trying to reach. My friends, I've spent the last seven minutes here on this rant and I understand it's very tactical and it's not motivational and funny <laughs> but I fucking promise you that if you really understand what I'm talking about, you will do what you actually care to do, which is sell shit, right? We're running businesses here. So please, please understand that because once you understand what I just spent my time on, how that works, you'll start understanding why every company here needs to hire an editor-in-chief. An editor-in-chief for your SaaS business, your law firm. An editor-in-chief, it's crazy, it's not something any of you would think, and I understand why, but you have to understand the playing field is changing.